Hi everyone, it's Shanine here, and in today's video, we are going to be learning how to use Laplace transforms to solve initial value problems. So to do this, we are going to be using the following theorem. Suppose f t, f prime of t, f double prime of t, f to the n minus 1 of t is continuous, and f to the n of t is piecewise continuous on the interval from 0 to infinity. Then the Laplace transform of f to the n of t is equal to s to the n times f of s, minus s to the n minus 1 times f of 0, minus s to the n minus 2 times f prime of 0, minus f to the n minus 1 of 0. And so as a corollary to this, we have the Laplace transform of y prime of t is equal to s times y minus y of 0, and the Laplace transform of y double prime of t is equal to s squared times y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. And we can apply this for the third derivatives and the fourth derivatives and so forth, but I just listed the Laplace transforms of the first derivative and second derivative of y because those are the two most common cases that we encounter when we are solving differential equations. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example here. So we have y prime plus 6y is equal to e to the 4t, and we're given this initial condition that y of 0 is equal to 2. And so as our first step, what we're going to do is we are going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of our differential equation. So we have the Laplace transform of y prime plus 6y is equal to e to the 4t. And because the Laplace transform is a linear transform, we can take the Laplace transform of each term separately. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the Laplace transform of y prime plus the Laplace transform of 6y is equal to the Laplace transform of e to the 4t. And because the Laplace transform is a linear transform, we can take the constants outside of the Laplace transform. So here we have a constant term. So let's go ahead and bring that out. So we have the Laplace transform of y prime plus 6 times the Laplace transform of y is equal to the Laplace transform of e to the 4t. Okay, so the Laplace transform of y prime is equal to s times y minus y of 0. So we have s times y minus y of 0. And then we have plus 6 times the Laplace transform of y, which we can just rewrite as a capital Y. And then we have the Laplace transform of e to the 4t. And remember from a previous video that the Laplace transform of something of the form e to the at is equal to 1 over s minus a. So here, a is equal to 4. So the Laplace transform of e to the 4t is equal to 1 over s minus 4. And now let's go ahead and plug in our initial condition. So we know that y of 0 is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have s times y minus 2 plus 6y is equal to 1 over s minus 4. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is solve for y. So first, let's go ahead and move this 2 onto the other side. So we have s times y plus 6y is equal to 1 over s minus 4 plus 2. And next, let's go ahead and factor out a y term here. So we have y times s plus 6 is equal to 1 over s minus 4 plus 2. And next, let's go ahead and solve for y. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by s plus 6. So we have y is equal to 1 over s minus 4 times s plus 6 plus 2 over s plus 6. And so this is our y. And what we're going to need to do next is perform partial fraction decomposition on this term here. 
so we can determine what its inverse Laplace transform is equal to. So we're doing partial fraction decomposition on this first term here. So we have 1 over s minus 4 times s plus 6 is equal to a over s minus 4 plus b over s plus 6. And let's go ahead and multiply this entire equation by the denominator of our original term. So we have s minus 4 times s plus 6. And so we get 1 is equal to a times s plus 6 plus b times s minus 4. And because we have two distinct factors, we can use the elimination method. So let's go ahead and set s equal to negative 6. So we get 1 is equal to a times negative 6 plus 6 plus b times negative 6 minus 4. And so we see here that negative 6 plus 6 is equal to 0. So this entire term is just equal to 0. And then we have 1 is equal to b times negative 6 minus 4. So this simplifies down to negative 10b. And so we have b is equal to negative 1 over 10. And then next, let's go ahead and set s equal to 4. So we get 1 is equal to a times 4 plus 6 plus b times 4 minus 4. And so here, 4 minus 4 is just equal to 0. So this is just equal to 0. And so we're left with 1 is equal to a times 4 plus 6, which simplifies down to 10a. And so here, we have a is equal to 1 over 10. And so we can rewrite 1 over s minus 4 plus s plus 6 as follows. So we have a, which is equal to 1 over 10, times 1 over s minus 4. And then we have a plus, but we can just switch that to a negative sign because the coefficient b is negative. So minus 1 over 10 times 1 over s plus 6. And now what we've done is we've broken this term down into its two separate fractions. So let's go ahead and plug this in for this term here and proceed. So plugging this in for 1 over s minus 4 plus s plus 6, we have y is equal to 1 over 10 times 1 over s minus 4 minus 1 over 10 times 1 over s plus 6. And then we have plus 2 over s plus 6. And then now what we're going to do is we notice that we have a common term. So we have a 1 over s plus 6 term here and a 2 over s plus 6 term here. So we're going to want to get a common denominator for the coefficient so that we can combine like terms. So let's do that. So we have y is equal to 1 over 10 times 1 over s minus 4. And then we have a minus 1 over 10 times 1 over s plus 6. And then here we have this fraction here. We have a 2, which we can rewrite as 2 over 1. And we just want a common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by 10. So we get 20 over 10. And so we have plus 20 over 10 times 1 over s plus 6. And so now we can combine these two coefficients here. And we get y is equal to 1 over 10 
times 1 over s minus 4. And then we have plus 19 over 10 times 1 over s plus 6. And so this is what y is equal to. And as our last step, what we're going to need to do is take the inverse Laplace transform of y. And so we have the inverse Laplace transform of y is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over 10 times 1 over s minus 4, and then plus the inverse Laplace transform of 19 over 10 times 1 over s plus 6. And because the inverse Laplace transform is a linear transform, we can go ahead and take these constants outside of our inverse Laplace transforms. And so we have the inverse Laplace transform of y is equal to 1 over 10 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 4 plus 19 over 10 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 6. And remember from the video on inverse Laplace transforms, the inverse Laplace transform of something of the form 1 over s minus a is equal to e to the at. So here we have a equal to 4, and here we have a is equal to negative 6. And so we have the inverse Laplace transform of a capital Y, which is equal to a lowercase y, and then we have 1 over 10 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 4, and so this is equal to e to the 4t, and then plus 19 over 10 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 6. So this is equal to e to the negative 6t. And so this is our final answer. And so that is how you use the plus transforms to solve initial value problems. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.